Okay, and we're back. <clears throat> oh, hello. Okay. So, hello. Everybody here? Yep. Still yeah. here? Okay, good. Still here. All right. Let's get into lame talk. <laughs> yeah, lame talk. So, right. so to I... continue off what I was saying from the first one, whoever keeps downvoting things on our channel, fuck that guy. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead. And just like that, family friendly is out the window. <laughs> oh, we already PG, PG, we already PG, explained PG. that the land talk part is is out the window. So yeah. the, 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 there you go. So yeah, just yeah, we're we're in the PG thirteen section. So <laughs> at least at the so, uh, PG thirteen. Whoops. <laughs> no, I mean that's still fine. You can still curse in PG thirteen. Just, just bleep it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm Irish. No one bleep it. <laughs> All good. All right. So the first thing, first thing on our agenda here is the uh, community discussion. Uh, I don't really know what whole lot what's going on here, so I want you guys to kind of explain where it's all at. I think Doom, you're the one that wanted to talk about this the most. Uh, If I'm not mistaken, I'll just I'll just say a couple things before Doom goes. Uh, The one thing that we talked (laughs) about last time was about Jensen. uh, About WB Jensen leaving. The only thing I'll mention right here, really quick in passing, is that. What seems like um, it, people taking over for Jensen, we're not really sure, is that we have WB Thompson as a new character showing up in the community center, with it, which is in-game, and also a little bit on the official forums, and another person called WB Jacob, who seems to be posting stuff as well. And then for a very brief moment, uh, our old community manager, Raijin, has came, came back to do a couple of announcements as well. So we're really not sure what's going on over there. That's the only thing I'll say. And then getting back to the whole WB Jensen leaving issue, back to do. Oh, uh, I don't know. There's really not much to say. I doubt Jensen's listening, but if you are, man, I wish you the best. Hope everything ended out okay. Hope you left on good terms and all that jazz. And uh, whatever you're doing in the future, man, hope you prosper. As far as the whole situation between Thompson, Raijin, and all of them, Raijin's always kind of been that big brother over our shoulder, so I'm used to him just kind of mulling around and doing what he can. As far as Thompson goes, as far as I know, I think he's just what he, I think he's only community manager in terms of the uh, community center on the game. And uh, yeah, Jacob taking over is fine and dandy, although I doubt that we're actually going to get any kind of community interaction like we did with Jensen, which was, oh my god, that was like... Between him and Raijin, that was like the golden era of our community, man. Mm-hmm. We had so much mm-hmm. communication. Mm-hmm. People were talking. <laughs> the forums were, uh, were being used. The actual official forums. Yeah. Now you go there and the last uh, character guide was someone talking about how OP their uh, <laughs> team idea was using uh, what was it, Emerald Archer Green Arrow and World's Greatest Detective Batman, which <laughs> I think was posted literally a year ago. Speaking of a year ago, oh my god, those anniversary packs. We just Ooh, about- I almost wrote a topic. I almost wrote a topic, but I didn't. <laughs> but uh, as far as Jacob goes, I mean, if he communicates with us, treats us well, good on him. But honestly, by this point, I'm kind of assuming that WB's not exactly going to be as friendly with us as they used to be. Because it seems like every time someone does get friendly with us... Uh, they leave. I have a I have a theory. So what? Tinfoil, tinfoil yeah. hat. I think Thompson. Oh God. Thompson is the one who is like quote unquote the most active, but in the community center, which is uh the 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 forums which which is in game. Now this is the tinfoil hat part. Here is the fact that if he's the one who's active and posting stuff, but only on one medium, are they just trying to promote that one area, that one spot? Right, not even even though the official forums is technically their own thing too, but they're pushing everyone to go there to uh, rather than anywhere else for their news. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, in fairness, they have a much tighter. <laughs> they do at the Reddit. We're kind of lots fear as far as uh, complaints and all that stuff goes, which you know works kind of to our detriment. But I think it's better for the community. It's healthier. So I could understand why they would push everyone more to a medium that they have direct say over. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so I, I kind of have a little bit of a, a, a different story that went along with uh, Ryzen and Jensen. Uh, and so uh, if I can take about three minutes to kind of walk you through the history of what's going to happen uh, for us at Superhero Review. 
so we had uh, we originally had a uh, Rigen who we were communicating back and forth with, and this was in the very early days of uh, of our channel, uh, back in like uh, the episodes of forties uh, and fifties, and we're now at like one fifty one uh, is is our current count that we have at Superhero Review. And uh, back in like the forties and fifties times, we were communicating with Rigen uh, quite a bit. Uh, we we actually had an original from him uh, where he was requesting like even our physical address so that myself and Maddie uh, could go on to the site and are going to our channel and promote uh, different things for, for um, DC legends and uh, communication with him kind of broke down a little bit. And then we got Jensen and uh, to your earlier point, doom, uh, I had really good communication with him so much so that he was actually working uh, communication up the, up, up the ladder at, uh, at WB and uh, even mentioned, yeah, we, we want to try to get in lockstep with Superhero Review and get y'all to be not the uh, official YouTube channel, but one of the uh, sponsored uh, uh, YouTube channels for sure. And we would get uh, some content to review first in kind of the way that me and Maddie do and uh, even have some merchandise that we would uh, promote for WB on our uh, YouTube channel. And that kind of broke down too once he, once he left. Uh, and so uh, I guess I'm kind of putting out a feeler there for Thompson or whoever the new person is. That's something that uh, our channel is definitely uh, interested in continuing to to do communications with, uh, because uh, like we said, our YouTube channel wouldn't even exist without this game. Uh, and we we really enjoy it. We love the the interaction that we have. And, uh, you know, this just started from a father and daughter that that wanted to do something fun uh, and then uh, kind of missed that communication loop. Of, of moving that up to the next level with, with WB. Hmm. You know, it's funny and a bit interesting. I have a similar scenario. Of course, this was back when I did the insights and discussions, but, you know, they're sort of a big deal. I'm not going to brag and be like, oh, <laughs> that's in some sliced bread. But, you know, yeah, Bryjan actually had talked to me for a bit and was like, yeah, we want to get you to come and work here as a content creator. And da, da, da. They are talking about, like, flying me out to San Francisco and all that jazz. But unfortunately, the only degree I have is not applicable and they need a bachelor's in something that's basically not UAV engineering. So, <laughs> you know, and I'm working on my bachelor's in business. It's hard. Algebra is hard. But, uh, you know, that... Well, again, if you ever need help with said, math. Yeah. Oh, I always need help with math. <laughs> but uh, as you said, you know, communication kind of broke down when Raijin left and then Jensen came in and yeah, Jensen was also very passionate, very eager to get the community people in on the actual WB action. But uh, yeah, again, things broke down when he left. I'm not putting out a feeler. I'm retired. Y'all can <laughs> y'all don't even have to talk to me. I'm fine. But uh, just to corroborate what you're saying. Like right, Jen and Jensen, they definitely felt more uh, community minded. Mm -hmm. Yes. what I'm getting feeling wise from the other guys. And I'm sure Thompson's a very nice guy. You know, he probably community, but his community in comparison to the Reddit, in my opinion. So, you know, he needs to uh, step up his community game, maybe start promoting <laughs> us. Just saying. Yeah. I remember, I remember Jensen saying a while back, or was it Raijin, uh, that they, they weren't allowed to directly post onto Reddit. And I really wonder what the clauses is in, in their contracts are. But if WE is listening, let them, let them go out into our, uh, our forum and write what they want because they'll be really well received, I think. So. Oh, I can actually tell you exactly what's going on with that. Uh, they're actually not allowed to because of some law against self-advertising on Reddit. Oh. But okay. I told them, or at least I told Jensen, I was like, first off, we're a subreddit. If we don't report you, no one's going to know. But second, like, you're not advertising your product. You're telling us information. You know, like if you're saying, hey, buy Stefan Wolf, that's one thing. But if you're saying, hey, here's what Stefan Wolf does and here's what right. the deals are on these right. days, that's here's different. News, right. <laughs> So. Yeah. Like, I told him, I was like, tons of communities have their direct creators who just communicate with them. It's a normal thing, you know? Yeah. But yeah. I guess maybe they have some red tape there that they can't cross over. And that may actually involve the WB legal team, even. Yeah, it could be. At that point, who knows? 
I mean, back onto the topic so, about content creation, as Dan was saying, YouTube content is uh, pretty much like the, the way of the the way that these games sort of pan out in terms of social media and uh, viewership and followers and all that stuff, right? So uh, Superhero Review is probably one of the only YouTube contents that I, or uh, content creators that I've followed since their inception from the beginning. And now there's a lot of, even us, like we're a little bit, on YouTube, thanks to Ogre. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in terms of content creation as a whole, not just YouTube, like we, our content here is the podcast. And then uh, as you guys may have already seen, Hate Mail, after our last podcast, had decided to create his own podcast with his friend Slow Beast. Uh, and they call it We Are Our Legends. And it's a great cast. Uh, have, you, have you guys listened to it uh, yet? I have. Yeah, I've listened to a couple episodes. So it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Great stuff. I'm actually a bit hurt that Hate Mail left us to go start another co- podcast. More like we are our traitors. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've listened. It's actually really high quality stuff. Like, uh, it's weird to say that it's something that I feel like we should aspire towards, but yeah. they have such a natural flow. It's so nice. I think that I think uh, what Hate Mail was mentioning is because Slow Beast was uh, went out and got like a lot of the hardware himself, like uh, sound panels and good microphones, good setup. So the the audio coming in from his side sounds great, uh, and I don't really have anything to say bad about from his side. Uh, the other side is because Hate Mail is calling into him. I'm sure that's why he's, the recording sounds kind of a bit awkward from Hate Mail's side. But it still sounds great. So just for those of you guys listening to this cast, if you think that we need to help, we need to step up our game, you need to help help us step up our game. Help us help you. <laughs> there you go. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, if, yeah, I, if I, I can afford it, anything other than my phone and a pair of headphones, yeah. you know, yeah. that'd be cool. <laughs> help, help us keep the lights on first. <laughs> And then once we have that covered, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work on right. microphones and stuff. So Help so us move a... Ogre out of the swamp, all that jazz. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am outside right now. <laughs> it's there is, uh, you know, this is one of the more, uh, you know, friendly and, and uh, collaborative groups that I've ever been a part of. Uh, you know, even uh, uh, like Fanetic Jalapeno, who's out there, who, who produces a lot of great uh, YouTube stuff. You know, we... We've given him shout outs before. He's he's liked our videos before, left comments on each other. And, you know, the, the thing is, this this is only going to grow through positivity. And, you know, it, it, I I'm fortunately I haven't seen any kind of, uh, you know, back and forth tension between any kind of content creators. I mean, my gosh, y'all, y'all contacted me to get on here. And so, yeah, and I appreciate that. It, uh, you know, it, it, it just shows that, uh, you know, power of, you know, I, here, here's my, my wrestling coming out, my power of positivity is going to, uh, you know, I think it, I think it helps everybody grow stronger, and uh, you know, uh, all everybody's content gets stronger through, uh, you know, promotion of each other. Mm-hmm. It's completely. Yeah, completely and I, I actually have to give a shout out to you, Dan, because back when you guys first started, I think I made a comment on one of your videos that if you wanted help, and then I helped you out with something, you gave me a shout out on the Reddit community and everything, and I thought that was really cool. Yep. So absolutely. I'm actually, yeah excited that you're on here today with us (laughs) yeah i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty stoked about it too because i remember back when i was doing my insights and discussions i had a period where i was like i feel lazy let's do some guest insights where i have other people write the insights for me you know some people call it lazy i call it monopolizing but there you go (laughs) but uh but it was actually way fun you know getting everyone's different inputs like dc legends he was super straight to the point like very short but then you had other people like Arab, very fluffy very nice with what they said and then of course my wife ended up doing one and i think i liked hers the best you know swamp <laughs> thing being experiment gum guy that's mm. cool. chemo bubble gum guy with boots that's mm, that's quality <laughs> but i agree like when the community works together especially when they're coming from different parts of the community like visual versus writing things like that it, there's nothing we can't do so to sort of touch on what uh, what dan was just saying the if every if 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 everyone who's listening to this hasn't already picked up on it the reason why we started um this podcast was obviously to promote the game and ourselves and our own content but at the same time the reason why we started doing um guest hosts is to promote, to promote them too and our community because we the oddsmen are the mods of Reddit, uh, the current subreddit. And 
what we want to do as a whole is to promote all of you guys, to promote us as a, as a community. So the best thing, in my opinion, the best thing to do as uh, content creators is to promote other content creators so that we can promote each other. The only way we can grow is through each other. And that's really the only, the, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I've seen other games and other content creators completely fail because they're sort of trying to run head to head with other content creators. And they're trying to mm-hmm. say, like, they're, they're trying to be their own thing. They're trying to differentiate themselves from each other. And I say, hey, you know, if we end up uh, like copying a little bit of each other or just happen to say the same things, because it's going to happen when you're playing the same game. Who cares? Just promote each other. Say, hey, I saw this guy. He said this. And this guy was using this. And I'm using his information to create my own information. And you know, yeah. hate mail on their podcast. They did that recently with Ogre's info and with uh, the Pingman's info and uh, Luke Boy 9000. I, I think that's what it was. Yep. Right. So they give the shout outs and gave credit where credit was due. And at the same time, you know, they've rehashed it and made it their own content. And I think that's perfectly fine as long as, you know, you're not plagiarizing one. So Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Make sure you give credit. Yeah. Fess up to it. Don't be like, yeah. I had this idea. It's called yeah. Lobo and Deathstroke. Don't act like <laughs> it's your idea. We know it's not your idea. Please tell me more about this amazing idea. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. No, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, if you're interested in that, I have some oceanfront property in Arizona <laughs> <laughs> that I want you to look at. <laughs> so, uh, uh, spe- speaking um, about the community, uh, a, a bit of a pat on the back to ourselves. The Reddit community has hit four thousand legends. Woohoo! Hooray! Hooray. <laughs> Sorry, one of those is actually Mike spelled backwards. Nobody knew, but I think everybody knew. Because, uh... But still, yeah, that's amazing. 4,000 people. God, I remember back when we started, we had, like, what, 300 people with, like, 10 people coming on a day, and now we have, about yeah. like 126 at any given time. Yeah. It's crazy. Right? Yeah, it's quite good. Excellent. Yeah, because I... I think I started the game a little bit later than you guys. I actually just crossed my one year mark now because I started like three weeks after, right around the Thanksgiving time frame. Uh, so I actually just crossed my one year, and I remember going onto the Reddit, and I think Doom had like one post when it started. So oh yeah, the Doomsday <laughs> Insight and Discussion, the first posted, and I didn't yeah. even own the character. I actually just thought your your name your your handle was based on Doomsday for the longest time. So <laughs> you cut out there, DP. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. I I don't know how to feel about what. You- sorry, hold on. Uh, mm. Can you hear me now? Does it sound better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just saying. Uh, I thought that Dooms Dooms his handle was based on Doomsday <laughs> because it was. Oh. Uh, yeah, no. Interesting. Oh, goodness. No, I'm not even going to get into the backstory about that. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, moving on. Another time. <laughs> yeah. So, so, obviously, the lamb talk, what everybody really, really wants to hear is our review of Justice League. Yeah, buddy. So, uh, so spoiler alert from this point forward, we will be talking about Justice League and the movie and everything about it. No holds uh, until the very end, probably the last fifteen or twenty minutes, we'll be doing the question session. But just so you know, this is going to be very spoiler filled because I have a lot to say. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think. We- Wait, Doom. Have you watched a movie recently in your life? <laughs> yeah. Have you watched this movie? Did Did you see yeah. Justice League? Oh wow! Okay, I'll cool. See Justice League, of course. Oh, Dude, wow. I'm a humongous <laughs> Flash buff. Any movie with oh, a Flash, okay, good, I'm gonna good. go see. Okay, it. awesome, awesome, awesome. So let, let's yeah. let's just go ahead and break it down, character by character, what you guys thought, and then break it down by overall movie, how you would rank it, and everything else. Let's what go are we ahead doing? And start with uh, hold on, are we doing one to ten scale? We could. Why not? Uh, however you want to do it. You know, right. I mean, I'm just, let's just talk a little bit and then we'll rate it afterwards. Sure. Uh, let's just start with Flash. What did you all think of Ezra Miller's Flash? Stole the movie. I thought... Completely stole the movie. <laughs> I, I, thought that, I thought that it was an interesting take on him because, and I didn't even think about this until one of my buddies brought it up, but his nephew uh, has autism. Oh. And. He, he 
Flash made a comment that he doesn't interact with people well. Mm. And his nephew really connected with that. So I thought, I was like, you know, that makes a good point. He does kind of seem a little autistic uh -huh. in that sense. Mm. You know, he's just really awkward around people. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I just kind of chalked it up to just his hyperactivity. But uh, the more you look at it, yeah, he does have kind of that, uh, you know, spastic approach to everything when, when he walks into the the uh yeah, the back cave for the first the time and he's just phone. jetting around yeah and then you look at the way he runs it's kind of awkward there too so it's even mm -hmm. yeah you know it's throughout his whole character he's just kind of that has that little brother feel that's, to him that's really hmm. cool i didn't pick up on that at all that's a good yeah. take that is a, a very good take up. yeah cool mm -hmm. cool cool so but yeah, I, th I thought he was an interesting character. He was a little slow for my liking, and it also uh -huh. kind of, well, okay. So hold on, hold on, hold on. My my opinion hinges on where Suicide Squad actually falls in the mm -hmm. canon storyline, mm -hmm. because if it comes before this movie, Flash has already captured Captain Boomerang. Mm. You know, he he's an established hero, and yet in the movie, he's kind of played as a I don't know what I'm doing character. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you have to think that Suicide Squad comes after Justice League, uh, as far as timeline. It, it can't because they talk about Superman's death, uh, and it, it, it he he wouldn't be resurrected in Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. Right. So that might actually just be something that the the writers missed out on. I actually did. that was a that was a total whiff on their part. It has really? to be. I actually didn't even pick up on the Superman death in Super Suicide Squad. He was dead. At What's that? He was already dead at that point. Yeah, because that, that, yeah, that's so what Amanda that's Waller's saying. talking about, and and she's she's saying, you know, if it, it, what if the next Superman wasn't a good Superman, and and yeah. Okay, so th yeah. That, that makes more sense now. That's when she was. I don't know that. I Wayne. don't know that that actually references yes. him being dead, though. I don't think they specifically say he was dead. Yeah, yeah keep in mind uh, whenever she's walking into some big uh, office, there's a man standing outside, and it says "Remember him," and they've got the Superman t-shirts that he's selling showing that you know he had died already Ooh, good catch. yeah yeah good catch superman super yeah. dead so, in suicide squad yeah. super dead yeah so yeah so they definitely missed the opportunity there to establish flash as a slightly better character because mm -hmm. he literally said oh i just have pushed a few people and run away when now, we don't know that he, he didn't just push caught. captain boomerang and ran away <laughs> well <laughs> That's like true. He delivered him, hand delivered him, basically. He could have been. Yeah, um, very true. Now, the other thing is the way you see Flash coming into the super suicide, suicide Squad movie is kind of like how he was. He showed up in Batman v Superman, just sort of as a blip from the future. So he could have just been from the future when he's already, you know, developed as a character, as a person, as a catch. right? And it, it well, could he, be, and that is something that they could around. actually touch on, right? Like he, he, yeah. he, well, he, he obviously, he he knows that Captain Boomerang is essential for the Suicide Squad to defeat Enchantress in that moment. And he had to make sure that Captain Boomerang is in the Suicide Squad, maybe. So that's why, to make sure that the timeline doesn't get messed up, that's what he did, right? So maybe, I don't know. It's all well, connected. Point, since yeah. Flashpoint Paradox is supposed to be the movie we're getting for That'd Flash be, Solo. I can't movies. wait. According, Cannot wait for that. I know. According to Zack Snyder. Like my favorite storyline. That's according to Zack Snyder, which brings me to another point we'll talk about later about the directors, but... Moving on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, um, I didn't even get to give my review of Flash. Man, you guys what do you got, Flash? What do you got? What do you got? I don't know. <laughs> Flash was okay. I feel like they kind of shoehorned in his comedic side a bit. Like, I understand that he, as a character, is, you know, that goofy guy. But, like, really, he's going to be like, oh, hey, can I go get a snack? Because I'm always hungry type stuff. No, thank you. And also, the uh, the visual effects... I don't know. I felt they were lackluster. Honestly, like Flash hey, running. I thought the visuals were good. I, I thought they were good, but they shouldn't be where they are when you're dealing with the Flash. You know what I mean? Like, it would have been good for someone like Quicksilver. But the Flash? I better yeah. see. Like, yeah, time you know, record. yeah, to your point, you know, what, what's frustrating is we, we're, we're in a golden age of comic book movies right now where you see Quicksilver in X Men and it takes this. You know, uh, sweet dreams are made of these, and it, it oh goes God, through that entire the motion there. And you know, it just takes it, it, you can you can see the extra millions that they spent on a scene like that. And then you come into this Justice League one where we're like, you know, 
I've seen this done a little bit better in this other X-Men movie. It's still good, but had I not seen this other one, it would have made it it would have made it great. And it was just mm-hmm. good yeah. in comparison. Yeah, that's what it, I'm it, saying. It felt just a little bit outdated, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is Justice League. This is the movie. They, yes. they should have definitely put a bit more into it. That's yeah. just my yeah. thoughts. Yeah. The the effects the effects definitely could have used some more work. But in terms of uh Barry Allen's character, now my input here is not just as a fan of Flash, but also uh, I went to watch the movie with a friend who is not a big uh, comic book fan, but he knows of certain comic book heroes, right? And his favorite mm-hmm. character in that movie was The Flash based on his jokes, right? So, yeah. and it's not because like he it was the way uh, it was spliced in or anything. He just felt like everything was timed well for every scene. He feel like every scene that Ezra it, Miller he was, was the in, most natural. Right. Well, that was sort of the reaction that he got from the movie. Well, I guess that's just different strokes for different folks. Then it yeah. felt forced to me, but I can understand why other people might like it. Anyways, yeah. enough about the Flash. I, I want to say one last. Yeah, thing. Let's, I, I do want to say one thing about yeah. Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller, I can't remember which uh, interview it was. It might have been at Comic Con or something. But his favorite—he's uh, a huge comic book geek himself, and his favorite character is the Flash, as from what I heard. So. Can you imagine that's, that's that? Just, be so just put, put yourself in that guy's shoes, right? Your favorite character yeah. is the Flash, and you are the Flash. It's if like, it wasn't before, he is now for right. sure. It's, it's like Mio Dan, <laughs> if Mio Dan got cast as Superman for a movie, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> man. Bring it on. <laughs> so, yeah, but wow. now I feel even worse now, because you got to imagine he looked at the effects that they were putting on his running, and even he was like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But that's just me being salty. Let's go on to the other characters. Well, you know, other characters. So let's let's cover the new characters before we cover the three that have already been established. Uh, what do you guys think of Aquamoa? Aquaman. Um, Jason Momoa's Aquaman came off as kind I, of a surfer bro a little bit. Yeah. I'll, I I'll say this about him. I, I think whenever I was watching the previews or the trailers for it, I, I did have a worry that he was going to be very bro-like, uh, very, very surfer dude. And uh, at least whenever I went into the movie, I had a preconceived notion that that's what I was going to see. Fortunately, uh, when the movie hit and you, you spend enough time with him in that fishing village, you can see that there's a more well-rounded character there. Uh, and uh, as it went through, uh, you know, I guess we'll go ahead and talk about the spoiler scene where he's sitting on the lasso of truth. And uh, I mean, gosh, <laughs> oh, that was just stole the whole movie for I'm like, this does not fit at all in this movie. Why is he talking like this? And sure enough, they point down. He takes the lasso out and throws it at Wonder Woman, you know, pointing at her saying how she's hot. We're all going to die. I don't know what you're doing here. And then it's just like, hey, that was the scene. That was the scene for that me. One, that one was pretty funny. That was a pretty funny scene. Uh, mm-hmm. It was one of the times where their comedy was actually well received, I think. Do you guys pick yeah. up on that um, um, homage to something? It's an homage to... Uh, a scene from I can't remember which movie or animated series, but it's in the Justice League where Wonder yep. Woman uh, does the same thing to Green Lantern to Hal, to Hal Jordan. <laughs> oh, and the animated, right? I think uh-huh. yeah. I even, it was even in the very first comic. You're right. Was You're it, right. Was right. It an animated series, or the movie. I can't remember. It well, was, no, 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 the it was an animated movie. It was an animated yeah. movie. Justice League War. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, it was yeah, them yeah, versus yeah, Dark Side. Yeah, yeah. I just watched that again recently. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Justice League War. Movie. Oh, it's such a good one, um, too. Everyone's like, so, you're not just a guy in a bat costume, right? And Batman's like, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. So, the only thing about Aquamoa that actually bothered me was when they actually went down to Atlantis, and he didn't seem like he actually knew anybody in Atlantis. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That felt it's like, and I okay, think you're so right. I, th- I think that's how they're playing it. Actually, is that uh, this was his first time coming back because he ha- he doesn't have he's not the king of Atlantis yet, uh, and no, so I think not. that's what they're leading us in his new movie. Who Mara was he's he's just Arthur. Yes, King at that point, right? So, mm-hmm. Yeah, right. the prodigal son has returned. Yeah, yeah, and he didn't even know who his future wife is going to be. Like, I feel she like looked really cool, though. To be fair, Mira, yeah, Mira looked awesome. Awesome. But there was there was a thing about that that whole storyline that I probably think that they're going to develop more in his uh, standalone movie. But it well, yeah, feels, yeah, like, it feels like from the animated movie, the Justice League Throne of Atlantis. Uh, it's it's like it's a little bit of the beginning scenes of that movie, right? And he's mm, yeah. he's coming. He's trying to figure out where he's from, where who his mother was. But you already know that Atlanta is dead at that point, right? Atlanta is no longer there. 
Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. oh wait, so is the is his own movie going to be a a spin off from that or a prequel to that? Like, are we going to see like Orm versus Atlanta? And him coming to save the day, or what's going on there, right? So, I wonder how. Well, I've got a little bit of insight on that. Already and has Ocean Master, yeah, announced as the villain. We're going to be following up after the after the scenes of Justice League, uh, and this is going to be him trying to go after the throne. Uh, and uh, he he has a five point uh, trident, I guess is the best way to say it, and he's going to be going for his uh, his actual king's trident uh, at that point. So it'll be it'll be it, it should it's. It's the next one on the docket, uh, and so I guess I won't get into. We'll, we'll talk about final thoughts here in a little bit, but uh, you know the idea is that's the next one that they have in line, and so they really can't afford for it to fall, uh, you know, fall short. Yeah. 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 Honestly, as far as I go, they could have phoned it in really hard with the whole broy stuff, and I'm glad they didn't. Aquaman yeah. was very refreshing, especially considering what you were going in expecting. Oh yeah. So I yeah. think they did good. It was a powerful performance. Well done. As a as yeah. a as a character as a whole, I feel like he was casted well. Like Jason Momoa is a great actor. He's great in everything that he's in. I feel, and I thought in tune with the whole like uh, surfer like sort of Baywatch thing because he was literally on Baywatch Hawaii, <laughs> and he's from <laughs> Hawaii. So they they literally built the character around him, around the actor, so he could be as natural as he needed to be. Uh, in the character. So I thought that was really well done, well written. Uh, and yeah, it showed yeah. too. And if you look at all yeah. the other w- visions of Aquaman as a character in the Justice League and all the other things that he was in, Aquaman is sort of like the family guy rip on the Justice League. He's sort of like, oh, you know, Aquaman's literally just a fish out of water. He can't do anything. He's useless. Yeah. This is the complete opposite. Yeah. They show how... Well, if you ever come close to water... Major ass. Yeah. <laughs> he kicks a Man. major ass. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm, I'm, hold on, I'm being attacked by my pug. Uh, man, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like people who diss on Aquaman don't know Aquaman. Like, he's out know. there making white Martians have seizures because they evolved from fish and, like, <laughs> drying up entire water planets with his right hand because it has that dehydration power. It's He's a super sick, super tough hero. Like, yeah, he 75% so many of all. Our- Doesn't he rival yeah. Superman as far as pure strength? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, seventy five percent of our world is covered in ocean, and all the rest of them take care of the other twenty five percent. And that's not to mention that at one point, one of the comics, uh, Captain Marvel turns against Superman, and they actually have Aquaman fight Captain Marvel because Aquaman's naturally resistant to lightning magic because he's an Atlantean. Like nice. Shazam's like Love oh, it. throwing a lightning, and then Aquaman straight up no sells it with his trident. It, it was so sick. <laughs> Speaking of, Shazam, oh, geez. speaking of Shazam, did you guys pick up on the small, the small Easter egg, the Shazam Easter? Egg? Mm-hmm. You guys know where it was? Uh, I must have missed that one. Yeah. I saw, I saw I'm the lantern. Sure that was Zeus. It, yeah, yeah. But... It's not a direct. I don't think it was Zeus though. I think it was. What's his name? I'm pretty sure it was because it was way bigger. I, I, that that it was, was Zeus. One of the old gods. Was it? That was Zeus. I was thinking it, it was. was. It was way bigger. I was thinking it was Solomon who gives him his powers, right? Like not Shazam, Shazam, but the wizard, the great wizard Solomon. Anyway. Billy, Billy Batson? Yeah. That's yeah. What I mean. But yeah. Now, see, I, I don't think it was. I think it was Zeus. Right. Okay. No, that was because Zeus. They referenced that was the old Zeus. Gods. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just thinking too far ahead. Okay. That's all right. Well, that's no, all right. Hey, we all, we all want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that's not what I thought. Yeah, because they were talking about the Now, old in that same that. scene, you did, however, catch a glimpse of Green Lantern. Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, they, and I love, I love that they took the time. What? I love that they took the time for him to die, and then the ring to pop off, and they go and take off to go find somebody else that's worthy. I thought that is. Right? They took the extra, you know, three seconds. Who was it? Was it Abin yeah. Sur? Was it Abin Sur, or was it the other guy? No, no, no. Who, this was two thousand years ago or yeah, something. Right. So it's not Abin Sur. It was. No, no, no. It's not Abin Sur. It's not that. It's somebody else it, way back. It wasn't Arcus Chumic or Medfil. So, <laughs> was not. as we know from our game. Yeah, because it was, it was not. Arcus never dies, and no one ever uses. There you go. Though. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that I ran Medfil for a long good. time. Thank you. Okay, so about the other characters. Anyway, <laughs> last last fresh character is Cyborg. Now, yeah. I thought Ray Fisher as Cyborg looked. Like Cyborg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number one. Number one. 
Number two, I believe the dude came off of Broadway to do this. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a musical guy? He did, yeah, he did. He's a musical guy? I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so I thought he did a really, really good job. And the only, only issue I had is such a small issue, but I really wish that the Booyah had been yelled yeah. instead of just flatly yeah. said. Like teen yeah. Like because teen I, I, given I, him... Well, no, it's just You know, like... I, I gotta... Yeah. I got to be the Debbie Downer on this one. You know, I, I think that this was the Snyder effect because, uh, you know, they had to have – every party had to have the pooper. That's why we invited Cyborg. You know, I, that's what I think. I do. I do. You know, because, uh, you know, it was Superman before, and before that it was Batman. Uh, you know, if, if everybody's happy, then nobody's happy. And so they had to have one mopey character. Now, granted, the guy's dealing with some amazing stuff that he has to get over, and he did drop the underwhelming booyah. Uh, and so, with all well, that I said, still have, I still have a follow up for that too. So okay, okay, he did just get exploded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, okay, maybe he's, he's just happy had, to be alive. Yeah, he's probably had but, better days, you know. Yeah, but like, I I really think that the way he played the character seemed really flat and robotic throughout mm. the whole movie. He was very methodical, very logical. Uh, so you sign it, kind of got that. So I really think that a yelled booyah would have kind of brought the character full circle and brought him back to his humanity. There you go. A little bit more. I think yep. that would have been just a little bit more powerful for the character. But overall, I, I thought his performance was great. So really, that's so weird. Because yeah. honestly, I thought that the flat booyah was perfect. Like mm-hmm. if he had yelled booyah, I feel like I would have been taken really far out of the thing. Because right up to that point, he's just coming to terms with himself you know he's still trying to get through all the whole you know being exploded type stuff and honestly the flat booyah that felt more like you know when you succeed at something you give yourself that nice little silent fist pump when no one's looking Uh, you know yeah whereas like yelling the booyah in that situation i would have been like like come on man but no that was like a nice nice smooth cool like yeah now I don't remember if he cracked a smile at that point or something. Did he? Did he at least do that? Does anybody he remember? Did. He did. He did. Okay. There was, he okay. Did. I, feel, I feel a little better about it then, at least, because I didn't even pay attention to that. It, it, it could have been. I was just like, like oh come on, that he was going for right. That could have been. Yeah, I mean, they could have just was... not said it at all. I'm glad that they did. Honestly. Oh no. Heck oh yeah, they had to say it. So, they had so to say it. Did. <laughs> now so happy yeah, here's the thing. That. You, you said you wanted to jump into the new characters after this, but you're forgetting they did introduce one more brand new major character that we all know and love from the DC Legends universe. Chemo. <laughs> Death, <laughs> Deathstroke. <laughs> Deathstroke the Terminator, yeah. baby. Deathstroke. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Oh, man. Ho- was, hopefully you stayed to the end of the credits. That was my game segue. Because if you the did second, you were going to miss it. The second post-scene credit. That was, yeah, that, was right. be, that was gonna be my game segue, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, I, you know, I'm telling you, it, I, I will say this: they did a great job of hiding both him and Lex uh, because everybody thought, okay, well, Lex isn't in this movie, and neither, and nobody even thought about Deathstroke. And uh, if you've been following anything on the world of comic book movies, you know that originally it was released by Ben Affleck, uh, and, and everybody thought, okay, that's gonna be in the in the solo the Batman movie. And he's going to be the main bad guy, but they snuck him into the very end of this movie, and it was still um, uh, what's that guy's name? John, John um, Migliano. Thank you very yeah. much. Yep, the, the one that you just said. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I mean that was excellent. I mean huge surprise. Okay. Huge shocker. So I love Deathstroke. I have a Deathstroke hat I wear all the time. Um, I love the way his outfit looked. The only issue I had with him, literally was that his beard looked like it was glued on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that That's was the only flaw I saw. In. Actually, I, I mispronounced <laughs> his name. It's Manga, Manganiello, but it's it's Italian. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, right. But Whatever. I, I'm looking at de- uh, his the actor, his face right now, and I'm looking at pictures of Deathstroke. They yeah, actually, man. They should have just casted him as him without actually having to put, put him the makeup and recolor his beard and his hair. He looks fine. Like as Deathstroke as yeah. is, he didn't need to actually. As is, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he's got the he's got the salty. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel good. Like, yeah, I kind of feel like what they were trying to go for was a comic book look of Deathstroke, but he looks fine as Deathstroke as he is. And the Death, yeah. but my favorite Deathstroke is a Deathstroke from the Arrow from the Arrowverse. He, that the Australian guy who plays him, he's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, he was so good. You know, it's crazy. So, my only issue with Deathstroke is that he only had one eye because at that point in the timeline, he should still have both. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He he didn't get speared yet at that point. Or was it speared? You know, I don't I don't know. I mean, think about it. This is this is a 20 year old Batman. He probably has had his run ins with him already. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I think I think a seasoned Deathstroke is about right. Nice, nice seasoned, right yes. But <laughs> eyeball missing. Eh. Let, let's let's use uh, that as a segue into Batman. That's that's very stickler stuff. Yes, Batman. Yeah, I want to talk about Batman. Batman I I honestly <laughs> think Batfleck is probably the best complete. Bruce Wayne Batman we've had since Keaton. Yes. I agree. Yes, I don't I know about you guys. completely, 100%. Bruce Wayne, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Now, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That, that Fleck is best Fleck. I have I have three different takes on <laughs> Batman in the different Batmans that we've seen in our lives throughout cinematic and TV history. You mean they're like seven different ones? Yeah, right. So for me, if I were to rank them, <laughs> I would rank them kind of like how we separate Batman into the DCL uh, universe. So we have the world's greatest detective, we have Batman TDK, and we have uh, Batman the Dark or the Cape Crusader. Or so yeah. to me, uh, the Batman Ben Affleck's Batman is TDK Batman. Yes. He has a pretty strong sort of character in that sense, right? So he has he feels that pretty well. Uh, mm-hmm. The world's greatest detective mm-hmm. Batman is always going to be Adam West. Period. Yes. Right? Flat out. There's and no the other. Cape Crusader is arguable, but the Cape Crusader to me is Christian Bale. So Christian Bale's yep. Cape Crusader, he was, he's arguably also the Dark Knight too in some senses, but he's really uh, like that sort of ninja Batman. You know, he's that guy that comes out from the darkness and just messes everybody up. Right? And they, they, yeah. They, yeah. Whereas Batman, uh, Ben Affleck's Batman right now, he's sort of a really well rounded Batman, I feel. He's really mm-hmm. well done, I feel. And you could see Ben Affleck's input into that character really well. Now, I don't know if you guys caught this, but I actually thought it was one of the better scenes where Batman gets the crap kicked out of him by Superman after the battle. He's pulling his, trying to pull his shirt up and is all beat to crap. Yeah. Uh, his shoulders popped out of place and Wonder Woman has to go and help him pop it back in. It mm-hmm. kind of humanized him and showed that he doesn't have any powers. This yeah. is a seasoned yeah. Batman I for sure. Yeah, I thought it was a good scene. So that the whole yeah. the whole with the the reference to do you bleed thing, and then after it's like, oh yeah, something. Oh, that was so good. That was so good. I loved yeah. that. And I, I I'm, I'm I'm trying to hold back my enthusiasm for Superman, so you know I don't want to go into it. Too much. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, so good, so good. Um. Yeah. All right, I can't. I can't hold it back anymore. I got to jump into Superman now. So let's talk. Yeah, about, let's talk about Superman. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, that to me, that was as uh, that that was the Superman I've been waiting for for the DC Cinematic Universe. I mean, I because because now don't get me wrong. I actually really liked uh, the Man of Steel movie. I know that was very divisive. I wasn't a big fan of him killing at the end of it. But with all that said, it was a coming of age. It was his first time being Superman. And then Mopey Superman and Batman v Superman, I, I didn't dig that at all. And then this time when he comes back and he just is wrecking shop on the entire Justice League, you know, he gets headbutted by Wonder Woman. He kind of shakes it off and headbutts her back right through the concrete. And he doesn't know anybody. Flash is coming around the corner. He gives him that little turn and look. Oh, I'm like, oh, the, that is Superman. The and, you know, and, and, and the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, they're, they're doing two more things, and I, I promise I'll stop. Because <laughs> I can talk Superman all day. But uh, <laughs> but the, the, the thing I love about it is, yeah, he picks him up, he goes, I know you. And he goes over and lifts him up and asks if he bleeds. And then they do the tie back to Batman v Superman. He says, bring out the big guns, and he pulls out Lois. <laughs> and that takes us all the way back to Batman v Superman, where Flash comes through and he says, Lois is the key. Go get Lois. And if it wasn't yeah. for that, what would have happened? You know, <laughs> right. he would have just destroyed everybody. Yeah. And but yeah. Lois is the one that calmed the the you know the raging monster. And uh, and then yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and so you know so the last thing I'll say about it is whenever he comes back and he is 
you know, completely weedenized with the, the, the bright primary colors. He's got the bright reds, yellows, and, and, and blues. And then at that point, you see him uh, take on Steppenwolf, and he comes back and he says, wait, I got to go save these people, takes off and lifts up an orphanage and <laughs> takes it off to another section. And then finally yeah. he comes back and said, is this guy still bothering you? And then he <laughs> basically takes him out single-handedly. I mean, right. that is the Superman. He even, he even took the time to be to, to, to build in the truth and justice. Yeah. Oh, it was – okay, I'll stop now. That, that was his, his my Superman. His dialogue was right really good. His yeah. dialogue was really good. My friend, my friend who was watching so, it – I Sorry, my friend that was watching it uh, with me at the same time, he had one criticism about Superman, and it's just a general criticism, not just in this movie. And you, you can really see it in this movie, is the fact that he's so strong, he's so Superman, mm. that uh, how are they ever really going to develop more of his storyline in other movies? Uh, because it's too hard to, uh, to sort of take him down or sort of to put him in a vulnerable state. Right, and uh, because he's not a big Superman fan, he doesn't really know the canon. Obviously, how how what happens to him throughout the rest of the storyline. But yeah. he he, I can definitely see what he's saying because if we think of him as literally a god, uh, and he can't be touched by the most like because they talk about the Injustice League, right? How are they ever really going to tackle Superman? Is it just all going to be about like a massive crypt? Kryptonite, kryptonite exists, right? Because that's going to kryptonite be, exists. That's going to be Superman Returns. The, remember that movie with you know Kevin Spacey? No, it's mass. not going to be that bad. <laughs> but I mean, it could be. It, it could be uh, like that's the problem with the Superman movies. Well, when you get into that horror, okay, so like, how do you defeat him? Right. So. Here's the thing, though. You now have contracted Deathstroke for the Injustice League, mm -hmm. or the Legion of Doom, or whatever you want to call it. Because they didn't really specify, obviously. Okay. He said League of Our Own, so I'm inclined to believe it's... Injustice League. Yeah. So that's Tom Hanks, right? <laughs> so, yeah, oh, somebody, I'm, I'm glad somebody caught the reference. <laughs> man, I'm glad somebody got it. Oh, oh man, I feel old. <laughs> that was a good one. But no, uh, it's definitely one of those things that you could, you could consider Deathstroke just taking on Superman with a little bit of kryptonite weaponry. Yeah. Would probably yep. do just fine. So we know he bleeds from it. Is it going to be war suit anything? Lex? Is it going to be war suit Lex or survival suit Lex? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just going to be Lex. I don't think he's going to have a suit. <laughs> and if he does, it's going to be one of those end of the movie things. Green and purple comes out. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you got, man? Thoughts on? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Personally, as far as Man of Steel goes, I'm a fan of the Sonic Boom neck snap, but that that's just, part of it. you know, because it's like I was like, oh, is really gonna kill him? Is it really gonna kill him? And they snap the neck, and then you just see like you see ripples around it, and I'm like, oh, that's good. But uh, yeah. as far as Superman goes in this movie, I agree. He is really living up to his hype of. I am the Man of Steel type stuff, you know? That's it. Yeah. And uh, so my, I can always see... I had an issue with... Oh, go ahead. No, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I can only really see it going two ways from here. Well, technically two new ways. I can see it going a couple dark things like that. But uh, it's either going to go the all-star Superman route, or Superman gets cancer, and then becomes a literal god, and then dies, and then we get his son. Or it's gonna go like Justice League Doom, where Mirror Master hacks Batman's control panel and it just procedurally starts owning each Justice League member. Oh yeah, yeah. I see Tower of Babel in, in in the future. Oh my God, Flash having light speed seizures. Oh, I, I want to see that. Cinematic. So good, so good. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Aquaman uh, my, getting a fear of issue. water. <laughs> Oh, so the, the the only two problems that I had with the Superman was more of a of a technical issue. I mean, I think we all saw Mustache Gate. Yes. Uh, <laughs> if, if you're if you were paying close yeah. enough attention, you could see it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was there, and especially in the very opening scenes where somebody's you know recording it on their iPhone or whatever they had, and I'm like, oh man, it's so obvious. Uh, and then, of course, for me personally, if you've watched enough of my videos about things that I want to see in, in DC Legends, I, I've been pounding the desk for a black suit Superman. Yes. I want resurrection black suit Superman Solar and no black suit Superman. Oh, yeah. it wasn't there. It never used it. I either wanted the black suit rebirth Superman with the mullet or the, uh, the solar suit. 
the yes absolutely oh well yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I had an issue with the Superman. His power level seemed to be all over the place as far as the DCEU right now. Mm. Uh, he seemed weaker at first, and he got stronger, and then got weaker again, and then he got stronger again. It's just like, and then in this movie, they just made him way over the top. Yeah. yeah. Like, he took on Steppenwolf by himself and just beat the shit out of him. Yep. He did. Like... <laughs> How does that make Steppenwolf a good villain for this movie? Well, I think that's what's going to show. It it doesn't. It doesn't. You're right. And I I think that's one of my biggest bads about this movie is Steppenwolf, to be honest with you. Not from the seed, from the CG all the way to to just, gosh, the the character development of him. But that's what's going to make, that's what's going to make Doomsday, or sorry, not Doomsday. uh, That's what's going to make Dark uh, Dark Side uh, so much better, I think. Yeah, I would actually agree with that. Because you see Steppenwolf, and you're like, oh, this guy's the big bad, he's a big deal, and the Superman manhandles him. And then you're like, oh, but that was just the son. Now you're going to meet daddy. Then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, here, here's a theory that I heard, and I don't know how much of it was a theory and how much of it's true. Uh, originally, the Justice League was supposed to be two movies, mm-hmm. and it was originally supposed to be the resurrection of Superman, and Superman was supposed to be evil. Oh well, he kind of was. He was supposed yeah. to. He was supposed to stay evil, ah. just go out blatantly kill Steppenwolf because he was in the way. Oh, ah. and then the Justice League were supposed to fight Superman. Now that's interesting. That's a, that's, a, that's a bit different from what I heard because the whole uh, his being zombified and rebirth thing right now is uh is sort of a homage to the Christopher Reeves Superman two two I think was it mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, where he fights the evil version of Superman. Right, right. So that's like the sort of homage. Yeah. That. That's Zack Snyder sort of. He does a lot of that throughout this movie, right? Well, in the parts that he yeah. is directing, right? So, so that's weird. Yeah, you could even hear the 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 dun 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 dun, dun when he comes back. You can hear it. the John Williams score. Yeah, you could hear it. Yeah, yeah. No, they used it. Yeah, they also did it for Batman too. Did you pick it up? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. His name I can't remember his name. Dan E. Dan something. Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman, that's it. Danny Elfman, there you go. Well done. Yeah. So the five so, notes, the five notes of the Batman score. <laughs> that's all it took. Yeah. That's all it took. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So last person we didn't talk about yet, uh, Gal Gadot's Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. How do you feel that she was developed in this movie? I thought her super speed was ridiculous. Mm. I did not realize she had that power. Uh-huh. Speeding <laughs> bullets. Yeah. I did not realize that. I wish that, I mean, she, she, was a little, she deflects little too bullets, liberal with so. her racers attack thing. I think that overall, in terms of like yeah. what they showed, in terms of effects, they did a lot, but they could have they could have done more. Maybe they're trying to hold it back for something else, like another movie. Uh, I wanted to see, like, you know that she can fly, but they didn't really show her flying. You see her jump really high into the air, for example, but. Well, she didn't have an invisible jet, so yeah, obviously. I was going to say, it's, it's got to be a visible jet, man. Are they going to show that off later then? Is that what it is? I mean, God, if I they do, not. you won't see it, so. <laughs> there Who knows? you go. Oh, speaking. Oh. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Well, I was just saying, I, I think that uh, there, there's two two points that I had on Wonder Woman. Uh, obviously, they're, they're rolling off the success of the Wonder Woman movie directly into this, and, and they understood that they had to do something with her character, and uh, I like the fact that uh, you know, she's kind of called out by Batman and said, you know, Superman was supposed to be an icon or a symbol or, you know, a symbol of hope. Where have you been for the last 100 years? And they kind of get into this little shoving match. Uh, and so I thought that was kind of a, a cool conflict uh, between the two characters on, you know, gosh, we, need, we somebody has to fill his void and you haven't filled it for the last 100 years. So uh, it's really cool yeah. kind of character development that you see out of Wonder Woman. And by the end, you see her saying, you know, follow my lead on this. And so, uh, you know, I, I like the progression of her and how she's going to now take on more of a leadership role, which in today's society is excellent. I mean, uh, you know, you can see Batman, but Batman's aging. Uh, you can see Superman, but he can't always be trusted. So who's the, who's the most logical one to lead? It's going to be Wonder Woman. Oh, uh, speaking, speaking of trusted, they touched on it briefly, but never went into it. Trusting Cyborg. Mm-hmm. Mm. Throughout the movie, they touched on it briefly, but didn't go into it at all. And it makes me wonder if it'll come back up when they actually face Darkseid. Oh yeah. Ooh yeah, has to. Because he's, he's gonna get that. 
He's a mother. Yeah, he's head. gonna get that boom to that uh, boom tube technology type stuff, and people are gonna be like, mm, I don't know. Because yeah. I guarantee you, at some point, Darkseid's just gonna straight up walk out of Cyborg. <laughs> oh, you, know, oh yeah. you guys didn't know that that was a thing. Oh, my bad. But uh, as far as Wonder <laughs> Woman goes, the only thing I have that I'm like uh, about is that it felt like when they were having her go into the combat, they're kind of doing like almost a tutorial thing. Like, oh, look, she's fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, she's got the yeah. bracers thing. And then yep. instantly was yeah. like, okay, yeah. well, you learned everything you need to know. <sighs> and then just power scaling yeah. went out the window. And, and, and that's yeah. probably one of my biggest complaints about the whole movie was what you just talked about, that really quick rushing pace. I mean, we went straight from Wonder Woman, straight to Aquaman, straight to Flash, straight to the end. It's just like, slow down a little bit. Give us a – I mean, Barry Allen talked about the Speed Force while eating pizza and then walked through the, for the all scene. Of I'm two like, lines. there's so much. There's so much there we missed. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for all of two lines that he had. About yes. The Speed Force. Speaking of yeah. – that was actually what I was going to say earlier. Um, the whole movie as a whole – Felt like it could have used another forty-five minutes or so. Speaking I agree. Of just, mm-hmm. This is the, what is do happening. The, do you know the, the behind the scenes of that? That whole issue. No. So the movie intentionally no. was cut down. The movie was two. Hours oh yeah, yeah. I, I know about that. Originally, two hours and forty-five minutes. Mm. It was cut down to a hundred. I want minutes. that director's cut. It was oh, we're going to get that. You better believe we're going to get that extended cut. No, no, oh, yeah. Director's but, cut, but, picking it up. But it's an extended Heck cut yeah. Blu-ray. You must have it on Blu-ray only. They've already... Absolutely. They've, no, they've, they even say it's not available in DVD. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So, oh, well, that's uh, the other thing is... The other thing about this... I'm going to have to pick up a Blu-ray player. <laughs> why... He, here's, here's the issue that I got. Now we're getting into sort of like the, the movie as a whole, the directing and the network and the studios, right? So... The yeah. movie was cut down by 55 minutes. It's huge. It's huge. If you think mm. about it. So now, yeah. let's look at it from the other point of view. It was almost three hours long. So if it was almost three hours long, you're getting into Lord of the Rings territory, right? And mm. uh-huh. you're getting under two hours. And people sat through all those. to the Marvel Cinematic Universe area. So clearly, mm-hmm. this is WB's reaction, like WB's decision to cut down, the movie down to this limit was sort of to compete against their competitors, their, their primary competitors, right? So the thing is, like, how are you going to tell someone to go watch uh, a comic book movie when it's, like, twice the length of another movie at the same time, you know? Like, it, I don't know how they're trying to attack this. It's sort of, it's really awkward, I feel. Like, why just, well, why this, just make this it, is... keep it that way? Well, this is the best Marvel movie that Warner Brothers ever made. I mean, it, it truly was. No, no, no. No, no, I said it right. Yeah, I said it right. Yeah, no, no, I said it right. I mean, to, 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 your, to your point, what you were saying there, uh, you know, is that, yeah, I mean, th- this, is, this is their attack on how do we make a, how do we make a Marvel movie? And so that, that's what I'm saying is that this is the best Marvel movie that, that Warner Brothers ever made. I mean, they were trying to get Whedon because of the success that he had with uh, the Avengers and bring in that same kind of levity, that same kind of color palette, that same kind of pacing mm-hmm. and the same kind of speed to it and, and timing of it. And, you know, I think they got away from what was really successful in, you know, the uh, well, I guess it wasn't as successful with the uh, Batman v Superman. Uh, but it made him more money, uh, and so yeah, I agree. So uh, of, you know. I was gonna say, honestly, the way I see it is more that they cut it down because let's say that they kept it as long as it could possibly be, right? Why would you want to go see the Flash movie after that? Because yeah. they basically covered everything the Flash that you would need to know and would want to see. But now sure. they're like, oh yeah, he talked about Speed Force for two lines. And then it's just a gigantic, just like, give me more. I need mm. more. And then they're like, oh, yeah, by the way. The problem with that movie. is that the real yeah, problem with that is that only actual fans know about that. Yeah. Like, oh. if you're just a regular person walking into this yeah. movie, you're going to not even notice or care. Yeah. I don't know. I disagree because I think that you're going to hear that. You're going to be like, oh, Speed Force. That sounds important. But then when they don't talk about it and then talks about it you're gonna want to go see that movie to see what am i missing out on this was a big deal why was it a big deal but that's just well, me. i'm gonna watch the cw show yeah, yeah i'm, I'm, I'm yeah. a freaking nerd i you know <laughs> whatever i'll find any excuse to watch flash so okay. yeah same here 
Um, on the whole Joss Whedon thing, so do you guys know the whole story between Joss, like Zack Snyder, Joss Whedon? Like what happened? Yeah, Joss yeah. came in to finish the movie for Snyder because Snyder had to leave due to family issues with his uh, daughter committing suicide. Is that correct. right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's correct. It's quite sad. So, so yeah. And yeah. I think I think Snyder's original vision aren't him and Joss like kind of friends. Yes. And Joss kind of already knew what was going on, so he yes. kind of came and just kind of trimmed it up a little bit to make happy for the the WD execs, and said, "Okay, here's your product," you know. And he didn't really try to do too much away from what Snyder was already doing. So, yeah. So, I mean, overall, I mean, I think, I think the, the movie felt fine, but I think there was certain scenes where you could see, oh, this is Snyder's vision, and this is sort of Josh Whedon's series. So. There was a little bit of a disconnect yeah, there. Was, there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, there yeah. was color palette differences, no question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I just feel like if it were paced a bit better, it would have been so good. But just yeah. the quick rushes of pacing, that's the only thing that ruined it for me. Fantastic superhero yeah. movie. Awful Justice and that's, movie. And that's again, yeah. goes back to we're going to have to see that director's cut before we can actually pass judgment. Exactly. Yeah, but Steppenwolf ain't going to get any better, unfortunately. Oh, man. No, but if they explain what BoomTube technology is, if they explain anything, because they just showed it. They didn't tell you, oh, that's a BoomTube. You know, nobody has a clue what the hell's going on. Well, they're on the Starship Enterprise. Unless you're a fan. (laughs) Yeah. Beam me down, Scotty. I I, I think that's the real issue, is that DC makes movies for the fans. Marvel makes movies for everybody. Yep. And I think that's the real disconnect that WB is having right now uh-huh. with yeah. their movies. Great point. They don't, they don't take the time to explain everything they need to. On a fair point, we did kind of go Although- over Steppenwolf. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. That's, well, well, and that, really that, not that's probably about. for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that's how much like, he's really not worth talking about. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a good character cast as far as the person acting for him, but just they wasted so much voice. potential. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of awkward too how he said that Darkseid is his uh Darkseid is his what his nephew and he's actually the sorry no he's he's the nephew of Darkseid and his uncle's coming. That's correct. Oh, it's the opposite. Yeah, it's yeah. to be he fair, just said it was I'm, really yeah. one line. Yeah, yeah one it was all of one Darkseid, line. There was nothing else. But he, he was, uh-huh. Lord Darkseid is all we hear. His character as a uh, in general in this movie it just felt he it felt he was so boring. There's nothing really developed yeah. for him, and he just kind of died. It, it honestly him. felt like he wasn't even supposed to be there. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Like I was saying before, I think, honestly, that Steppenwolf was an afterthought to be created as the main villain. The main villain was originally supposed to be Superman. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, because I, I know they didn't want to hit Darkseid right out of the gate. Uh, they wanted to kind of build up to him, and so the only way they can do that is to throw in some B-list uh, you know, villain, and that's about the best they could come up with that has something to do with the new gods and you know the, the, the apocalypse world and all of that. Yeah. <sighs> Overall rating, guys. We're getting a little long here, so. Yeah. <laughs> Overall rating. Dan, overall rating one to ten, A to B, whatever you want to. Okay, uh, it, I'll, I'll give it a I'll give it a school grade. Uh, so I I, I want to give it a B plus, but uh, there's just there was too many pacing issues and too many uh, problems that I had with the villain, and so I'm going to give it a solid B. Mm. All right, Doom. I'll give it a C plus. I agree with a lot of the issues, but I don't know. It feels like it was. Uh, comparable to a paper that a college student writes like he started on it months ago and now it's due tomorrow and he's like oh crap i gotta finish it <laughs> rushed at the end yeah yeah so right. that, and again, that's that probably comes back to the director's cut uh-huh. and uh-huh. speaking of director the two directors issue yeah. so i mean i i think we need a little more for that but anyway uh gp what do you got personally i probably give it uh, B plus to A minus. Mainly, I would say it's really special for that A minus. The reason why I'd give it a B plus is because I came into it expecting an A quality movie, right? So I was I was uh, taken aback a bit, but not not as much as I thought I would be, right? So then, like the kind of there were scenes where it sort of I felt, oh, this is like a B movie, 
and they oh well well they they, they brought me back with this so it's sort of like teeter tottering back between a B and an A movie. So I think I saw a B plus, A minus for characters for certain people. Like there you go, Ezra Miller, yeah. uh, Victor uh, Ray Fisher, <laughs> and uh, Ben Affleck is always awesome. Henry Cavill, he's a great Superman. He needed more lines, or maybe we'll see them in the extended cuts. But well, you know, um, I yeah. feel like the characters were well casted. It was well done. It just unfortunately things were just chopped up too much. So yeah, yeah. A minus for the characters, B plus for the movie as a whole. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was I. Probably gonna give it a B plus. Also, it just uh, it had a few too many issues, and obviously my B plus is potential to go to an A as soon as I see the director's cut. Uh, so, because honestly, because we'll see how the race between Superman and Flash actually ends. Flash wins. <laughs> I, I don't think you're actually gonna see that. No, I don't think that's gonna be a a twenty second scene. I don't yeah. think you're gonna see the whole yeah. race. <laughs> so now, however. I think that would be really cool if that was the opening scene for Flashpoint. That would be cool. Uh-huh. He or if that so is actually what time. causes Flashpoint. <laughs> but yeah. If that's the last comment Flashpoint. that I want to make about that is, is I really love the direction of where this is going, though. Uh, I, I, was, I was very nervous about, you know, what are they going to do with the DC Cinematic Universe? You know, I, I feel like after I left Justice League, I thought, okay, now we're heading in a direction that I want to see. I mean, you, you, you see him going into uh, Wayne Manor and saying, okay, we're going to put a big table up here and we're going to have enough seats for all of us and more. And then you see a cut going out to Lex Luthor and say, we need to make a league of our own. And so I'm like, yeah, okay, now we're going somewhere. Now this, this universe has a, a true north. And so, you know, at least we, uh, we have our bearings and we know where we're going to go. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Feels like yeah. Solid. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward. I'm optimistic. Cool. Huh. Let's so. let's skip over the other new stuff and get to the questions because we're we're verging on. Oh, the honestly, nobody cares about that other stuff anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let, 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 let's let, let's get on to the uh, the the questions and wrap it up there. So. All right. Um, I'll take over just a little bit for because uh, so any of you guys listening on Discord, if you uh, if you'd like to, you can post your questions in the chat. And we'll try and answer them if we can. Otherwise, we have a couple questions. We have a few questions here from uh, Reddit to answer. Um, I'll just gloss over something really quick because we've answered them already throughout the the first part of the cast. Uh, Devil Gods asked, with so many people quitting, retiring uh, over Deathstroke, is this one of the worst metas the game has ever seen? Or was it uh, the same with uh, uh, Suicide Squad, Deathstroke, Arrow Brothers, etc.? And how should we DC address this to bring back at least some of the players? I think we've talked about this already. Like metas evolve, we just have to sort of mm-hmm. evolve with it. Either, either adapt or be swallowed by it, or just you know, if you want to quit, that's yep. like, it's your prerogative. That's that's, that's just the end of it. Mm-hmm. It's a game you play for fun. Okay. Yeah. Like, so. Now, as far as it being as bad as uh, the arrows one, no, I don't think so. This meta that we have. It's stale, but it's not unwinnable. There's tons of things you can do. It's just things people don't want to do. But back in the Arrows days, there was literally nothing you could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Arrow meta was tough. It was just all mirror matches. It was just boring at that point. Yeah. Literally all Mm -hmm. mirror matches. Well, it's the same as it is right now, except right now you have a million counters, but nobody wants to use them. Yep. Okay. Um, moving on from there, uh, let's see. So P- Tech Paradox asks a similar question based around desktop and mobile again. So PvP is stagnant. The preponder- uh, preponderance of DS, uh, Deathstroke, and uh, low- Baby Lobo teams continue to plug up PvP, and neither Magic Bullets provided by Stepping Wolf or TDK's rework adequately deal with Lobo's ability to uh, repeatedly res and immediately taunt. Uh, this meta obviously isn't going to change until something turns up. Uh, that can torpedo Deathstroke or easily end the res cycle. Since the de- devs seem to, d- to be dead set on no further changes to Deathstroke or Lobo, and the AI has the, intelli- has the intelligence of a sea sponge, what in- abilities uh, mm. would you stick on a new magic bullet that could potentially wreck an attacking DS team, uh, making it less attractive for players to use uh, that as a crutch? So my this is what I was trying to get to earlier in our cast, but I remembered that we had this question, so I brought it up here. I'll bring it up here instead. So for me personally, if I were to design a character as a complete magic bullet for this one thing, 
or maybe for a lot of things coming down the line, what if you made a character with passive buff immunities for enemy teams or for everyone? So nobody could get buffs, period. Imagine something like that. Uh, no. That's gross. That is as, gross. As a Doomsday player, I'm offended. <laughs> But what if so? What as a bleed you, player, I'm offended. No, that that's mm. debuffs. Now bleeds could be debuffs. You I don't care. Get, you can't get buffs. For <laughs> right. Cheetah needs to give strength ups. Okay. Camo needs mend. That's true. Camo Lobo doesn't need mend. Taunt. Okay. Lobo so what if? Uh, so what if it is a uh, you know very similar to what Hal Jordan does, or very similar to what uh, Harley Quinn does, where they take the move at the very beginning and you start off the match. By clearing the deck and anything that's on the other team, you clear it out only for a single turn, and that way you both kind of start off on a level base. I like that. I like that could work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to work with Harley's turn zero taunt because it's technically not at the start of the battle. So literally, it would just remove Deathstroke's awareness mm-hmm. and Livewire's evasion. Uh, right? actually. It depends. It's all based on the uh, priority orders because Deathstroke's passive and Livewire's passive wouldn't be active during that time, so you wouldn't clear them away. Could you think of a character that would yeah, fit something like this? Deathstroke's his leadership ability. Oh, yeah. I, I could easily think of a character that could counter it. I mean, honestly, all you would need to do is... <laughs> a second Deathstroke. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> okay, so... Get this right. Get instead of okay. So Deathstroke is a character that when your ally gains tons of buffs, right, and he, they stay on forever. So just make a character that whenever your opponent's characters die, you gain a ton of buffs forever. Mm. Then in How that about case, Dark Side. Yeah, like Dark Side. Dark Side freaking has anti life equation team leader. Exactly. Whenever he kills an enemy, he gains like crap tons of whatever and then what's Good deathstroke God. team's gonna do run their baby lobo into your dark side so that and he has to be energy affinity too just saying and then like you know he's just gonna well, completely here, mow down your team omega beam omega so beam. here here's my opinion on dark side one he'll either never be a character that we can use and he'll be a raid boss at some point or two if you do make him a character make him take multiple team slots Make him have an affinity for each team slot that he takes. Mm. Mm. So that you could actually have all three affinities represented, plus a neutral affinity for all four team slots, because it's freaking dark side. If he if he's not the whole team by himself, I don't really care. <laughs> okay, Ogre. Okay, Ogre. How about how about we how about they give us Necron? No. We've been going up against him forever. No. Make him a playable character. Necron no. is garbage. Like yeah. We beat him down so much. He, he's basically for us what Toad is for the Marvel Universe. Like he's, <laughs> he's cannon fodder. No, but like imagine it, right? Dark side. All he would need to do is, of course, the Omega Beams can't miss because Omega Beams can't miss. And right. then yeah, just give him crap tons of buffs whenever he kills anything because that kind of already fills into his normal character stuff. You know, he gains power through conquest, all that jazz. All of a sudden, bam, yeah. you've instantly fixed the meta because Harley Quinn's evasions don't matter. Deathstroke teams can't run into you because Dark Side wins. And yeah. he, would still, dark side. he would and still be countering. And everybody buys Dark Side. Yeah. Here, here, and WB makes tons of money. Everybody wins. <laughs> yeah. Here's another character that I actually thought would be really interesting profit. to counter the meta. Larflees. Larflees having an ability that he activates because they've already kind of introduced in the game with some of the Manhunters being able to steal buffs from everybody. What if Larfi has had an ability where he just takes everything? Mine. Hmm. Uh, all buffs, all debuffs, everything. I was actually it's thinking, uh, what's his name? That's Katana. Mr. Mr. Mix something, right? I Mi- forget how to... Mix, mix, mix your spit licks. Mix your spit licks. Yeah, this fix looks right. So <laughs> give him an ability that takes all buffs and turns them into debuffs. Ooh. But what's the opposite of awareness? Uh, that would be the lack of knowledge. No, there's <laughs> yes, <laughs> but no, there's a. Oh, is it the that... damage increase or whatever? Yeah, the one that the uh, AIs can put on you. Oh, yeah. Mm. Interesting. I like that. And, cool. and like instead of evasion, you get evasion down. Things like that. He turns everything backwards. Yeah. 
That's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. That's cool. That's a good idea. I like that. That's so cool. I, I, I think there's characters they can come out with that that will do it. That's cool. Um, speaking of which, and I still uh, think my rework idea from earlier about camo could work just fine. Speaking, yeah. of, speaking of the whole, we were talk, touching on Necron and Dark Side. So, uh, Mipanda65318 asks, uh, how would you envision an endless mode working for the game? Uh, for example, an unkillable boss or endless waves of minions or wraiths. Uh, what would be a good setup reward-wise for this? Mm. I've always gem, been... Give me gems. I've always been staunchly <laughs> against the idea of raid bosses, simply because bleed would just completely blow everything else out of the water like oh this guy yep. has infinite health oh i scratch him with cheetah now he takes four stacks of infinite damage every turn Woo! come at me but uh as far as <laughs> in, like an endless wave mode goes i can imagine that you know like yeah. you just have your four characters and they fight through wave after wave Swarm of gradually for example yeah and then every like i don't know f- 10 waves you fight etrig right Flash becomes amazing at that point. Oh, dear Prof- God. All of those speed-ups. Woo! But then you'll run into characters that are like, oh, look out, it's chemo, and then your Flash <laughs> is just dead. Captain Cold. Oof. <laughs> but I can imagine that, you know? Like, Parademons, yeah, definitely. Or, uh, heck, even because, you know, of the whole Black Just make the Knight background thing. dark side. Yeah. There you Make go. An apocalypse. Just have him standing there in the background, send, pointing a finger and having the demons pop in. Yeah, a pair of demons over and over and over. Oh, yeah, endless. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, as you progress, they get progressively stronger as well, so. And honestly, also thinking on it, it would be a really game because you could actually just go around and fight regular. Because kind of there's no shortage of those. Yeah, go ahead. You were cutting out a bit there. You're cutting it out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was saying you could use it to introduce Constantine because Constantine fights demons Ooh. all the time. You could just have that be a thing. Yeah, I want Constantine <laughs> somewhere. But I think it's gonna there's be- a lot of people begging for Constantine. Oh yeah. Th- we're not Martian Manhunter. No, oh, that's too. Martian Manhunter would be cool too. That's another mm-hmm. thing that everybody keeps saying, but I'm calling it right now. Next month, Martian Manhunter camo rework. Merry Christmas. There you go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> All green. <laughs> right. <sighs> okay, so, uh, so uh, to carry uh, on to carry on, there's a couple more questions here. Um speaking about You're cutting out DP. Sorry. Uh let me let me fix this. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Yep. Yep. Okay. So uh let's move on to the end of the year, as you guys were talking about. So BG Bat asks, what do you hope for the new year? For DCL. Well. That it isn't canceled? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that it isn't canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I would actually like them to slow down on their character creation even more. Mm. Yep. I, I, I think one character per month would be fine. And then you don't have to necessarily continue the 500 shard events. Because... The the events just take up all the time. All like the I energy. I have no time to actually farm characters or gear up characters that I actually want to anymore just because I'm working on all these stupid events that are always going. There's either the, the big ones or there's the smaller hero challenges, but there's always an event going, it seems like, except for a couple of days here and there randomly. But I would like them to slow down just a little bit and make... Characters that have been around forever, Bizarro, uh, Chemo, you know, available. Oh, never mind. Not Chemo <laughs> then. You know, my my number been one thing: forever. Shazam and Bizarro, uh, Joker. You know, characters that you just you don't have access to. That are super fan favorites that people want to use, but they can't because they can't get them anywhere. Hmm. So, so That's I've got two. I've got two things on my wish list for for 2018. Uh, number one, and if you've watched my my channel for any length of time, we've got uh, three Wonder Womans, we've got three Batmans, and one Superman. Give me, give me another Superman, <laughs> even if it's I mean, a cinematic universe. Fanboy. I don't care what it is. Fanboy, absolutely. I will take, my money. take take my money, please take my money. Technically, and, you know, it, it's, 
Bizarro is Superman. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I want I want either a DC cinematic universe, I want a black suit Superman, something. Anyway, so that's number one. But number two for me is I want an extended story mode. You know, the uh, I want to oh, be able to go. Yes. We've already cleared all of those. It's time, to, it's time to expand that. What's that? Where's chapter nine and ten? Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. My only wish, which I mean, Ogre's going to understand this more than anyone. I I play this other game, and a lot of the <laughs> features that they have that are standard issue are features that DC Legends doesn't have, like raid bosses. Uh, they don't have a stamina thing. You can just fight as much as you want. And, you know, just a collection of small quality of life improvements that would revolutionize DC Legends if they put it in. And it just makes me sad that features that we've been begging for for a year just are standard issue things now. Like, they just come with the package. So, if anything, I would just want DC Legends to come into the new era, you know, adopt some policies that maybe aren't what they're used to, but would definitely enhance the player base experience. Like, yeah, include more story mode, or I don't know, uh, get rid of stamina, because freaking I'm tired of spending all my energy trying to do these freaking heroics for 10 apiece. Why are they 10 apiece? They should cost 8 at the beginning at most. Ugh. And just a bunch of other stuff, you know, like character availability, right? And the other game, you can farm for character, sure, but you just can straight up get characters out of packs as whole things like that's just a thing that you do whereas here we're like yeah. hmm, i have to pay a hundred dollars to get l1 stefan amazing like no that's not amazing also their deals are constantly changing like it's not always oh buy this you get these gems which you can use to buy these character fragments it's like oh you can buy arena tickets to fight in the arena more and oh you can do this and that you know like small things this is this is getting uh into a whole different conversation now because we're gonna we could talk about no uh, yeah, no, yeah. but you know what I mean you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean just I wish they would kind of improve the experience because it's starting to yeah. feel really dated especially mm-hmm. when you compare it to other games that are coming out now. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to cut you off too short there, but we're approaching the three hour mark, so we gotta <laughs> let, let's wrap. No, up. you're yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I talked too got, much. All right, I got one question for you, Doom. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the preview for Marvel Strike Force? I have. What do you think? I've never been much of a fan of Marvel ever since much of no, Marvel. No, I'm just I'm not West. talking about whether you're a fan of Marvel. I'm talking about comparatively to DC Legends. Oh, looks beautiful. I Oh, it's out there. Hello? I think a lot more than I would which is not at all. <laughs> that was weird. Hello? You try that again, noob? Yeah. I think he had some problem with his audio. I think like internet just crapped. We'll have him pipe that one in. <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, okay. well that, with that, that I think DP, it's time to turn it over and yeah, let's wrap things up. Let's wrap it up. Okay. So this is the end of the show. Um, again, as we did in the first part, uh, if you guys don't already, uh, follow. Be sure to follow us on social media at uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud at The Oddsman. Uh, if you uh, would also like to help us, help you provide better content, uh, you can uh, become a patron on our Patreon page at Patreon.com/slash/The Oddsman. So uh, there, there's a lot of different uh, reward tiers and levels for you to donate. Even if you want to donate as little as one dollar to fifty dollars, up to it's, up, it's completely up to you, and that'll help us continue doing what we do uh, for you guys, providing this free content on a monthly basis, maybe even a weekly basis in the future. Who knows? And uh, turn it over to Dan. Any last minute uh, plugs? Yeah. So uh, you know, the, probably if you've been watching uh, any of the Reddit or uh, you know, you, if you knew that I was coming on here from uh, our channel, you already know about it, which is uh, on YouTube. Uh, just search up Superhero Review and you'll see myself and Maddie. Uh, we put out at least weekly content and uh, try to do even more than that when we can. Right now, we're really excited about uh, uh, one of the things that we're doing, which is the Superhero Review Superhero in You Challenge, uh, which challenges you to go out and do something in your local community. Uh, you know, we all read about superheroes. We all learn about superheroes and and get excited by by what they teach us and the lessons that we can learn from reading comic books. And so uh, our challenge to you is to go out into your community 
and uh, try to make a difference and, and try to spread some hope and, and some joy, especially this time of the year as we just finished up Thanksgiving and going into Christmas time. There's a lot of people, a lot of families out there that uh, can use some support and, and use just some uplifting. And so uh, be the hero in your area and uh, let us know about it on Superhero Review. Uh, leave us a comment or uh, send us an email at dclegendsfan at yahoo.com. Uh, and that's with an S on there. So DC Legends fan at yahoo.com or just go on to our superhero review on YouTube and let us know what you're doing to uh, be a hero in your community. Awesome. So, Ogre, any last words? Uh, I guess Doom, ha his phone died, yeah. by the way. Yeah. So that's what that was. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah. No, my last thoughts are I'm just. I look forward to continuing to play with you guys, you know, here in the next however long DC Legends continues. I look forward to continuing to bring you content as we can. Uh, I know things have been hard. I just just finished moving in my family to a new place. So everything is good to go on my end finally. So hopefully I'll get around to creating more videos and more Reddit stuff for you guys. Okay. Well, with that, uh, we'll end it here. Uh, usually I would play the outro at this point, but because we're running a little bit uh, late, I have to get going. So I'm going to cut it off what? and I'll splice in the outro into the podcast version. So unfortunately, you guys don't okay. listen to the two minutes of uh, awesome music. <laughs> <All right. laughs> have a good night, guys. All right, thanks, everybody. See you. Bye now. Bye, world. Have a good one. Hey guys, this is Ogre Barbarian of the Oddsmen. Wanted to give a huge shout out and thanks to everyone for listening. Catch us when we go live on Discord and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and SoundCloud at The Oddsmen. Feel free to check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash The Oddsmen for a variety of opportunities to help us grow and provide better content. Thanks again for your continued support. And as always, enjoy and grind on.